All right, everyone. So for day two of our class, we are going to focus on uh, the social network Google+. Plus. So day two, Google+. Plus. This is one of the big social networks. The biggest one is Facebook, which we will cover next time. Uh, last time we covered Twitter, which has about 320 million users. Google also has around 300 million users, etc. Uh, and so um, it's very valuable for us to look at it because it has hundreds of millions of users and hopefully users that are valuable to you. Now, there are some demographic information that we can take into consideration, although this is always fluid, in that who uses a particular network? Sometimes we can define that pretty well, sometimes not. Sometimes the information comes from the company itself. Sometimes it has to be gleaned from other sources. So what I'm getting at is that if you have a particular target audience that you're trying to reach, perhaps spend your time on that network. Uh, sometimes a network is not really you know, full of a certain demographic, so it, it might not behoove you too much to um, spend too much time figuring that out. But the point is that Google Plus traditionally has been the um, social network that has been focused more toward techy people, tech savvy people. So a demographic for Google Plus is tech savvy people. If you're looking for an audience, if your product is for tech savvy people, Google Plus might be the might be the uh, network for you to find that audience. Um, it seems to be also that um, Android users are the ones that focus on Google Plus a bit more, um, which stands to reason because Google Plus is a social network invented by Google, and Google is the company behind Android. So if you've got an Android phone, uh, Google Plus invented both. I mean, a Google company invented both, basically. Which reminds me, if you haven't taken a moment to mute your devices, please, please do that. Uh, mute your phones, tablets, etc. please. But the Google company is behind Google Plus and Google Android, which means that they are integrated. You get an Android phone and right away at the top, you know, on your home screen, there's a button for Google Plus. You may have never touched it, but many, many, many uh, thousands and millions of users on Google Plus, this is coming back over here actually. It's coming back this way. Uh, so many people are on Google Plus. Perhaps your audience, perhaps your, you know, your your customers are on Google Plus. Tech savvy people, Android users, and it's changing, of course, as more people use it. But it also skews mail. More males use Google Plus, but I'm not saying you're not going to find your audience there. I'm not saying you're not going to find the non-tech savvy people, the non-Android users, and the non-males. You will find the audience that you're looking for, perhaps not as a critical mass as you might for other networks. Um, backtracking for Twitter. From last time, this one seems to be just about everyone uses Twitter but it does seem to skew young, whatever, however you define that. Skewing toward the young. If you're reaching a younger audience, you might uh, go for Twitter for its immediacy and informality and such. But as we saw previously, everyone's on Twitter, right? The, this college is on Twitter, the city of San Diego, the nation of Japan, the White House, everyone's on Twitter. Uh, the personality of it is that it skews a bit young. So if you're looking for that audience, <coughs> there it is there. Male, female, it, it ranges. Socioeconomic positioning, it ranges. So Twitter is sort of like, you know, everyone. Uh, Google Plus leans a little bit toward these. And then eventually we'll talk about uh, Pinterest. And the demographics for this one are skews female. So if you're looking for a female audience, demographics show that Pinterest is where you might find your audience for, uh, for female uh, customers. 
when we get to that, which will be the fourth day of this cl uh, class, you know, in two more weeks, we'll talk about Pinterest. Next week, we'll be talking about Facebook. And for that one, I have to say everyone, which is good and bad. If everyone's on Facebook, so is your competition. And you're going to be a needle in a haystack. So we'll spend the day talking about what you need to do on Facebook to get traffic and get attention and such. And these can change. Uh, we can uh, get this information. Sometimes the companies themselves aren't very forthcoming about these numbers. Uh, you have to get them through third-party sources, uh, which might not have always the most accurate information. So I'm going to say, make a note of this website, socialmediaexaminer.com. We'll look at it together a little later. But socialmediaexaminer.com is one of the many websites out there that you can uh, browse for this industry of social media. You go there, they've got a brand new article just about every day, maybe multiple times per day, all about a particular network or tips and techniques, what's new, what's changed. This is how you keep up to date with stuff. In a sense, it's like a trade journal. You, you go here or many other kinds of sites, keep up to date with it all. Last time I had mentioned another website. Anyone remember that website? That was a social network? I was. Nope, nope, that was not it. I'm talking about a, a website of, um, of information. Mashable.com, yes. Mashable.com, we talked about that last time. That's another website for you to visit to keep up to date with this stuff. Although Mashable is a little bit more of everything, technology, society, politics, etc. Although there is a section on Mashable that you can go to for just social media stuff. In contrast, Social Media Examiner is all about social media. So the importance of Google Plus is that it's so integrated with the whole Google ecosystem. Your Google Android device, you know, your phone, your tablet, your Chromebook, your maybe Google-powered TV or whatever, your Google car, if you have one one day. It's integrated with Google+. Plus. It's all one company. It's, it's integrated together. And so it would be useful to get on Google+, Plus because if you search... I'm going to do this exercise here. You can do this if you'd like, but I'm going to open a web browser. I'm going to go to google.com, and I'm going to search for taco shops. And I see results like I've always seen on the search engines, Taco Shop SF, Fuzzy's Tacos Shop.com, etc. I get results from doing a Google search. But notice you also get this result on top here, which is much more visually appealing and draws the eye. Here, I get a map, I get these results, ratings, for me to make my decision out of these three. In your opinion, out of these three taco shops, which would you go to for lunch? Well, we have a few different answers, but probably you're not going to answer Los Panchos because it's got three stars out of five. Some of us pay attention to these star ratings to see, well, if other people are saying it's not so good, it's middle of the road, maybe I, I want to go to a better place. So then we've got Lucha Libre and we've got Humberto's. Well, I see 4.6 stars and I see 4.2 stars. Clearly, this one is better. But wait a minute. This one's got 56 reviews and that one's got 311 reviews. I go more for the ones, personally, the ones that have more reviews, more people opining on something, because then that creates a more true answer. If you've only got, comparatively here, 28, that's half of this one, less reviews here. Maybe this is a true review, or maybe there's just a lot of negativity for whatever reason that has happened. But when you get to, you know, 100 reviews, 70 reviews, 200, 300, 1,000 reviews, those reviews are probably true. People are always thinking about, you know, are these reviews real? Don't people pay for this? Don't people game the system? And isn't this, you know, can I believe those? Yes and no. When the reviews are relatively low, I don't believe it that much, because this could be gamed. 
the owner could have asked all of his friends and family to give a review. Still a bad review, but all of the friends and family <laughs> gave a bad review. I don't have 310 people that I can tell, give me a good review. So based on just on these hard numbers, I would focus more, perhaps, on Lucha Libre. Slightly lower rating than Umberto's, but more people to give an opinion. I want my company to show up like this. A little dot on a map, reviews, a cool picture to entice people, because I'm not even looking at these guys down here. It's just text that I've already tuned out. Whereas up here, I'm seeing reviews and pictures and such, and I can go more places. I'm going to see even more here, maps all over the, the area, and then, you know, star ratings and reviews and all of that. I want that. The secret to get that? A Google Plus page. So if you want your business to show up like this, nicer than the competition, Google Plus. That's what we're going to talk about today. Getting your business on Google Plus so that you look like this. Yes? A lot of us have home-based businesses and we don't want to put our address up. Mm -hmm. Do we have to? Unfortunately for this, uh, yes, because it is. this is Google Local and it wants to put an address, it wants to show you on a map as an address of a real location. One possible way around it, though, is to put a P.O. box. You've got a P.O. box, but still this focus is more on an actual <coughs> physical location to show you on a map. But you can still create a Google Plus page even if you don't have a physical location or don't want to share it, and you'll still get some benefits. Yes? It only shows the top three, right? On the first screen here, yes. When you click on more places, and then it'll show you a bunch more, several pages worth. Um, a variety of factors with a, with a huge concept of SEO, search engine optimization, which is my other class, which is, do you have a website? Are you on social media? Do you do blogging? How are you optimizing your site? It's a big topic. So this whole art and science and magic of getting first placement, it's better for another class, the SEO class. But part of SEO is social media. So in short, are you active on social media? Do you have a website, reviews, and such? What determines it is the algorithm of the search engine, Google or Bing or Yahoo. They have a, a software that determines it, and it's rather complicated, but that's what the other class is for. And so I'm seeing all these results all over the place. I want that. That will be Google+. Plus. We will create that right now. So a big reason, big reason for Google+, Plus to get uh, special focus on search results, on Google search results. The other people that were down below the pretty graphic, they are on the first page of Google results, and that's what we're always striving for, yes. But notice now there is a, a preferential treatment for those that have also set themselves up on Google+. And it stands to reason. Google Search is also owned by Google Company. Google Plus is owned by Google Company. So they are determining that if you're on their their network, you can get a little bit of a boost. And that sounds annoying because I've spent so much time to become a pro on Facebook. Does that mean I have, you know, I'm at a disadvantage? To some degree, yes. Uh, but unfortunately, that's the thing. This, this company has these various avenues, and if I explore their avenues, I get preferential treatment. Um, so the thing about any of the social media and search engine optimization is the more you know these rules and the tricks and the techniques and the do's and don'ts, the more you can use them to your advantage. <coughs> because this is a privately held, uh, this is a publicly held company, it is a company, you know, out there to make money and such. Google, it can manage its properties how it wants. And if you think, well, that's unfair, I've spent so much effort on Facebook and now I've got to get on, on Google Plus too. You don't have to, but it is highly recommended to get on, you know, into the game, into their game. Now you may have never have heard of uh, Google Plus yourself. You may have never used Google Plus yourself. You may not know anyone that uses Google Plus. But hundreds of millions of people uh, use Google Plus. 
And as I said, you should tap into the network where people are at. And honestly, personally, anecdotally, because not only do I teach this, as I said previously, I also am part of a company that we do this for real, for real companies. And we run social media for real companies, and we place their stuff on Twitter and YouTube and Twitter and Instagram and Google Plus all over the place. And I often find that if we share the same thing or just about the same thing on Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus, the F Google Plus one gets the most activity uh, on the quote unquote easiest way. I often see that Google Plus gets more results than the others. Even though Facebook has the larger demographic, Facebook has about 1.5 billion users. With so many people, you would think that's where I want to be because that's where all the customers are. All the customers are there as well as your competition. So that's why we'll talk about Facebook in detail next time. But I often see sharing to Google Plus gives me more results than Facebook. And unfortunately, I have to say, Facebook is making it harder to get real results, as we will see why next time. All of this on Google Plus and on Twitter and such, we can do it for free. We can uh, create an account and get attention and traffic and all of that. And what we have for Google Plus, Facebook, and Pinterest is something that Twitter doesn't have at the moment. They might change it later. But those three networks, what they have is a difference between personal profiles and business pages. Twitter does not. We saw this last time when we created an account and it asked us full name. And we thought, okay, so I have to put in my personal name? No, that's still your company name. At the moment, Twitter doesn't make a distinction between personal and business accounts. You just create an account and you use it as a, biz as a person or a business. Google+, Facebook, and Pinterest do have a distinction. Each of these networks wants you to use the business version of its network for business purposes. It doesn't want you to use the personal version for business. It doesn't want you to create a profile on purpose or accidentally as a business when you're a person, we'll see what that means in a moment, it's confusing. But we need to create a business page for Google+, Facebook, and Pinterest, in a, as opposed to a personal profile on those networks. Unfortunately, those words are very generic, and I'm going to get them mixed up once in a while too, but we hopefully will remember. Personal profile, business page. So if I say, let's go to our page, I'm trying to say our business page. If I say, we'll visit our profile, I'm trying to say our personal profile. And I'll try to uh, always say it correctly, but even I, even I get confused sometimes because these words are so generic. Profile and page, I would think they're the same thing. And in a sense, they are. But technically for the network, a profile is for people and a page is for a business. So therefore, one of the things that often happens when people take this class is they realize, I did it the wrong way. I created a business, I, I created a Pinterest page, but as a person, and I'm running it for my business, technically it's wrong, and technically Pinterest could shut your page down, your profile down, because it's not the right one. They want you to use the right one for the right thing. Same thing with Google+. Uh, Google basically gives you a free Google Plus profile when you get an Android phone but it gives you a personal profile. You have to take a couple of extra steps to create the business page. And Facebook as well. So many people come to the class and saying, I've got 700 friends on my, on my Facebook business. And I say, well, that's wrong. You don't have friends on a business page. You have likes. And we'll get to that detail later. But we need to have the proper kind of page for these networks. Twitter doesn't matter. Other networks don't matter also at the moment. When we get to Instagram next month, Instagram doesn't matter business or personal. And I believe also for YouTube it doesn't matter.
Those are the networks we'll be talking about in these two months. Google Plus, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. So the challenge that I've seen in the years that I've taught this class is the very first step in creating the account. I can't exactly show, like I did with Twitter, creating an account because Google Plus ties into a, uh, an email, like all the networks, and I've run out of emails to tell Google that I'm a new person. So I can't exactly show the very, very beginning steps. I'll go as far as I can, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go on, and then I'll show what I mean. So what we're, what we're going to do now is we're going to create this, this account. So any questions so far? If you have a Gmail account, you automatically get a... Yes. Yes, exactly. They tie it together. All of these Google services are tied together really well. So if you've already got a Gmail account, we'll easily be able to create a Google account. And when we get to it, in, in just a bit, the confusion is that um, depending how you create it, they've been changing this. So this stuff changes and, and all of that. Uh, the short answer is uh, usually you're going to create a uh, personal account first and then create a business account. Um, you don't have to use the personal for anything. You don't have to put your full name and what high school you went to and upload your photos and all of that. You don't have to use the personal one. Um, but it's I've seen that it is easier to create the personal one so that, that we can create and manage a business page. And me, who I am part of a company that we do this for several companies, I log in, I'm sitting with the owner of that uh, company, I sit with them at their computer and then I create the business page for the owner and then I give access to the owner to their business page. So now the owner can log in with their own Gmail credentials, I log in with my Gmail credentials and they're separate. They don't see my emails, I don't see their emails, they log in with their own credentials, and we can both manage the same business page. At the moment, Twitter doesn't quite have that. Everyone basically shares the same login information, which is a big security liability. Because I might have great password, you know, security, cybersecurity uh, concepts in that I have, uh, you know, I don't log in on a, at the Starbucks Wi-Fi and all of that, but my the other people in the company don't, and they don't care, and then they log in, and whoops, the account got hacked. One out of the seven people that manage that Twitter account is the failure point, and now the whole Twitter account is compromised. Because Twitter, everyone logs in basically with their same account. Google Plus, and Facebook, and uh, Pinterest to some degree. Um, I have to, uh, everyone can have their own login information, which is much more secure. I believe Instagram also at the moment only has one login, which is, which is problematic. And YouTube, that one is up on this row here. YouTube does have the ability for different people to log in with their own credentials securely. But Twitter and Instagram at the moment, one login, which is a security liability. So don't give out your company Twitter address or login to all the people in your Twitter in your business because if one of them doesn't practice good cybersecurity, you could have your account compromised. So we can create managers. Everyone's got their own personal Google Plus account, Gmail, and they are managers of the one business page. We'll see how to do that. We can do that on Facebook also and to some degree Pinterest. And we can also do that on YouTube. YouTube, if you didn't know, is also a Google property. Google is huge. Google's got Google Search, Android, Gmail, YouTube, Google Earth, all of that, for better or for worse. So what we're going to do is, let's go to your web browser. Let's go to plus.google.com. <coughs> plus.google.com plus
plus.google.com and then this will have this sort of little welcome screen. It'll talk about featured collections. Follow amazing stuff created by passionate people. All right, great. Just click let's go. And what we see here is something that I think is a bit reminiscent of Pinterest. If you've used Pinterest, you know about pin boards and so forth. We'll talk about Pinterest later. But basically, this reminds me of Pinterest. And this is relatively new. Uh, Google Plus has been around, I believe, since 2011, maybe 2012. It's been around a little while. And it was formed after Twitter and after Facebook. So if we say here, Facebook, um, I forgot exactly when it was founded, I believe 2004. Facebook has been around since 2004. It's been around more than 10 years. And then we've got Twitter, which has been around since 2006. It's going to celebrate 10 years. And Google Plus, I have to look it up, but I think it's 2012, maybe 2011. It's been around less, less time. And so Google Plus saw what was what Facebook was about, what Twitter was about, saw what, what they were about, and and thought, well, we'll make our own network, we'll make it like this, we'll improve upon it, and then we will um, we will have a better network. Everyone thinks they've got a better network. And so the most recent thing about Google Plus is that it added this thing sort of like pin boards, like Pinterest, which they call collections. And here, yours might look different than mine, but I've got something that says environment, streets, and world color, keeps trials and tribulations of a, my photography. Collections, these are people and businesses on Google Plus that are sharing content, and then they got sort of like a little boost right here because when you visit the Google Plus homepage, you see these things. I want that too. I want my Google Plus page to be featured like this too. And you can get that by creating an account and being active as we will as we will see because this is traffic. Population matters. Uh, Gazali, Martin, Thomas, Michael, Nikon, the company, Nikon, Nikon. They're, they're being featured right here, right on the home page of Google+. And anyone can be. It doesn't have to be a big company, a famous person. Anyone can get featured on the home page here. And then getting me traffic on Google+, Plus or to my website. Yes? When I turn on my computer, there's usually a little picture, and it asks me to write about if I like it. Mm. No, you most likely have Windows 10 computer, and when you turn on your, your computer, it shows you a picture up there. Do you like it or not? And that's actually uh, a Microsoft network. Microsoft showing you a picture. Do you like it? You say yes or no, and then that's part of their network. Yes? I'm noticing that the, that the collections are different on these computers. Are they on these I'm not exactly sure how it uh, how it shows this. Uh, I don't doubt that perhaps cookies, but these computers we just turned them on. They don't really have any browser history unless you've already kind of browsed around a little bit. It's most likely, mostly probably, random, but I don't doubt that perhaps it also checks cookies to see where you've traveled online to possibly show you stuff. And for me as a person, I don't like that. I don't want to be tracked. But as a business, I love that. I want. For someone that has been on Amazon all day long looking at technology stuff, when they come to Google+, and I've got a technology business, I want my technology collection to be shown to them. So as a business, I like that. As a person, perhaps not. But there's the good and the bad. Yes? I have logged into Gmail, and I think that like this, and so I have stuff that I didn't even know that reminds me of that. Exactly. This is a lot of, I don't think anyone's looked exactly the same. But as I'm saying, there's just a variety of factors here, and one of the big ones also most likely is since you've logged in already to Gmail, and you probably you know have your Gmail and you use it all day and you visit websites, there is a history of your travels and such. So that's why probably yours looks very different than this one. 
And so if you click on any one of these, the night sky, this is a collection of content that this person or business has shared on Google Plus, Thomas O'Brien. So therefore, we're going to create a Google Plus account soon, and then we're going to share stuff and put it into collections so that perhaps our stuff gets also shared, so that we can get traffic, so that we can get followed on Google Plus. Nearly 28,000 followers are paying attention to this collection. That's 28,000 potential customers or clients or leads or donations or whatever you're trying to do online. As we said previously, social media works for any online endeavor. I'm an artist and I want to get more fame for my art so that then I can get um, I can get in a in a you know in a museum. So I can show I've got 30,000 followers for my paintings. I'll go back, maybe look at another one. Little streets and world in color. So right here, Gazaruni has 74,000 followers. This was posted four days ago, 11 weeks ago, etc. What else? Star Trek. Looking at that one. This one's got 38,000, posted three weeks ago, etc. So people posting content about anything they want, think about it in terms of your business. We'll see that we can create as many collections as we want. We can organize our content into, you know, kind of like folders. We don't have that on Twitter. We tweet something, it goes out to the world, and people see it or not, and then it, it goes on. But on Google+, Plus, I can organize whatever I post into collections, and people can always come back to the collections over and over. People can follow a collection. And therefore, every time I post something new to a collection, in this case, the 60,000 followers could see this. And most of what I'm seeing here is uh, skewing a little bit more toward the non-business in that it's usually people sharing something. But this, of course, also works for businesses. I saw Nikon up there. Um, let's see any other companies. Right here, Igor Shevchenko Photography. Drop site, dropmysite.com. So people or companies can use this everyday exotic spices. Share their stuff, <coughs> get followers. And as we said on the first day, the importance of followers is not just an ego boost, but those are your potential customers. One percent. That's the goal of if you think in terms of one percent of my followers are the ones that are really going to follow through buy my product, click my link, watch my video, read my blog, 1%, then you have to understand why it's important to get as many followers as possible. You're not going to get followers just by creating an account. You're going to get followers by using it and sharing. So everything we talked about on Twitter last week also applies here, plus more stuff. Well, I'm excited. I want to get on Google+. Plus. How do you think you do so? Join Google+. Plus. If you already have a Gmail account, you're getting closer. You can click sign in. This is again the part where uh, I can't exactly show this because I don't have any more email addresses to use. But either click sign in and then you're going to sign in with your Gmail account, or you can click join Google, which takes you to the same place, and then you have to select create account. So, how many of you right now have a Gmail account? Okay, majority of people. So what you want to do is take a moment. I'm going to pause for a moment. You either sign in or create an account. If you create an account, it's going to ask you for a bunch of stuff to fill in. Fill it all in as honestly as possible. Again, you can make this all up. and You can delete it later. You can make this up, learn this stuff, and then delete it and do it for real later. It's up to you. So either sign in or sign up, and then uh, if you're having any trouble, call me over. Eventually, I think it'll say, if you've already got a Gmail, it'll say upgrade to Google+. Plus. You do want to do that. Uh, so let's take a moment, maybe one or two more minutes. Make sure you've got signed in, and then we'll go on.
So if anyone needs any help calling me over and uh, you create the account, if you don't want to pay here, that's fine. You can still follow along. You don't have to create the account. Remember this lab, we have deep freeze. When you turn the computer off, it forgets everything that you did. So you can do that. I may ask you for a phone number and such. Again, that's for security because anyone can create this account. It's free and therefore it wants to prevent spam by connecting with a phone number. So it's not that they're going to call you or and spam you and such. I've used this for years and I and I haven't been bothered by them. So it's it's a security feature. So we'll take a moment to sign in or sign up. Take a moment to sign in or sign up, and then we'll go on in just a moment.
So some of you are seeing a screen that says, do an upgrade. Do you do want to do that, do your upgrade? And then on the next screen, it'll ask you, would you like to add any friends? Just skip that as well to continue. And then you, you might say, would you like to follow any of these accounts? Just click continue. And it'll say, are you sure you want to follow? Just click continue. Again, we're not going to use any of this for personal. It's going to try to guide you to do a few things. Just you know, continue, continue, don't worry about it until we get to some kind of screen that kind of looks like that. If it doesn't, that's okay. We'll, we'll proceed in just a moment. Yes. Apparently, I have people for business, so that's why I can write an email. So, do I have a business page? Yeah, personal. I need some for right here. Let's see if I'm in the top right corner. Your signature profile is personal. Okay. Profiles are personal, and pages are business. We will create the business manager. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought this stuck up my memory. This is from the apps. I don't see that too often, but I think we'll be okay here because okay. we'll still be able to add. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Is this where we should be? Yeah, go ahead and click upgrade. Looks like not on the bottom right here. And then I think the next point, what you're going to do is just go continue. And continue again. And you click continue anyway. So we'll just stay at that page and we're on track. Anyone else having any trouble? Yeah, that's fine. 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 You don't have to use it. Thank 
So now here, let's uh, let's go on. Let's orient ourselves a little bit here. This is always the the part that again teaching this. Um, unfortunately, teaching it for a whole room of people sometimes is not as intuitive as it, as I would like it to be. And recently, Google has changed uh, their interface. They used to have a certain design, and then now they've got a new design. So how do you know if you got the new design? The new design has a very flat color at the top. Mine is blue because I'm in the collections screen. I've also got on the left side these menu items. If yours, you know, if you don't see the left menu item like me, it's uh, hidden inside of the three lines at the top left. If you don't see this kind of design where it's a flat color, look around somewhere on your screen. Usually it's on the bottom left that says, go to new Google or try the new Google Plus. Mine says back to classic. Don't click back to classic. But if yours says something like try the new Google Plus, click it. <coughs> the new Google Plus is what everyone's going to have eventually, so you might as well use the new one instead of the old one. What you should also be used to is, like I said, you might not see a menu on the left, or you might see a menu on the left. To bring that menu back and forth, you see you just click that those three lines at the top left. So does everyone see a menu at the left? And from the menu at the left, I've got Home, Communities, Profile, People. Click on Home. And so I'm on Home. And uh, the top is red. And I see stuff. You may or may not see anything there. You may or may not see the Unabomber. Don't worry. Um, and then I see collections, click on collections, and it takes you to the collection screen, and it's teal at the top. Click on communities, and you've got communities, which is green. Profile. I've got a profile already on Google+. Plus. It's already filled in and such. You probably don't have very much there. Click on people. I'm just kind of saying these are the different, different these are the main different screens of Google+. Plus. These are the places you're going to be hanging out at. You're going to log in. You're going to use these different screens. There's also settings which you can explore later. And then there's feedback and help. 
You can send feedback when something is broken, or you can look up help. And we're going to see that once we create a Google Plus business page, we will be able to get help, one-on-one -on -one phone help, from Google. Um, good luck with that on Twitter and uh, on Facebook as well. But on Google Plus, we can get a phone number to get a direct call by uh, a Google Plus qualified employee, and it works. I was with a client a few months ago. It was you know near midnight. We were at his store. We were having trouble with Google Plus. We called that number, we got a call back, and then we fixed the problem in two minutes. So they do answer this. They do answer the phone. Now, if you click on home again, this is going to be where you see the latest stuff from what you're, who you're following and whatever you've posted, and then on communities as well and such. But what I want to do, as I said, I don't want to... Um, use Google Plus as a person. I don't want to use it as a profile. I want to use it as a business. So you don't have to use Google Plus at all as a person for personal purposes. You want to use it as a business, as we'll see. And, uh, and for me, anecdotally, uh, as I've said previously, or I, I don't remember if I said it, but I'll say it now, <coughs> I don't like Facebook. I don't like to use Facebook for personal. Uh, I think it's too intrusive for regular people. But I love it for business. So in my company, we use Facebook and we use Twitter. We use all of these for clients. And we uh, really know the value of Facebook. For personal, I don't like it. I hardly log in. People are always saying, hey, did you see what I posted on Facebook? Nope, I haven't logged in in a month. So I personally like to use Google+. That's the one where I've got more friends and connections and I have fun and share stuff and meet people. I like Google+, a lot for personal. Business is also very good, as we will see. And I also like Twitter a lot for personal and for business. And for Facebook, I only like it for, per for business. I don't like it for personal. And then there's all the other networks that we'll talk about later. But we're getting here the personal, the personal view of Google+. Plus. On the top right corner, because I've set mine up already, mine has my icon, my picture. Yours is probably still the generic person. Click on that. Click on that icon on the top right. And what I see on mine, which is most diff probably most likely different for everyone, is I see some info about myself, and I see all of these Google Plus pages, all of these businesses. So as I said, you can create a personal account, but then you want a business page, and you can manage multiple ones. I don't believe there's a limit. If there is, it's probably like 50 accounts. You probably do not have 50 businesses to manage, so you're fine. But me, as a, as, as a person that works in a web design, a social media company, I have access to all of these different accounts. <coughs> and so I can log into all of these accounts and, sh and post stuff and answer questions and reviews and all of that for all of these companies. You probably don't see anything here because it's a brand new account. It hasn't been set up to add more pages. We'll do that in just a moment. But the point of this is as soon as you log in with your Gmail, it'll probably take you to your personal account. You've got to be very careful here. As a beginner, you're probably going to make the mistake a few times about, whoops, I shared that business post on my personal page. Or, whoops, I shared that personal thing on the business page. And the way you're going to keep track of that is on the top right corner. Google Plus Profile is the personal one, and Google Plus Page is the business page. So once we set this up and put your company logo and such, you should easily be able to tell at the top right corner, am I posting this on personal or business? And at the moment, it'll be a generic person for personal, and a little generic, I think it's like a little present, <laughs> a little present for business. So that's why as soon as possible we want to put in company logos and such. We'll see how. But if you look on the top right corner, it should say you logged in with this email and then this is your personal profile. Does anyone have that say Google Plus page at the moment? Okay. How many of you have any pages down here to manage? Very few people because you know we're, we're just learning this. How many of you, looking at this little screen here, see all your Google Plus pages? 
Okay, this is the part that's a little sometimes hard to teach, unfortunately. You're not going to see this until you have pages to manage. And it used to have a button to create pages here. Now they put it elsewhere. It's not the same as add account, unfortunately. Don't click on that. That's as if you want to link two Gmail accounts to this one account. We don't want that. We want to create multiple or at least one more business page on top of my personal profile. Notice how I'm emphasizing profile, personal, page, business. So here's what we need to do. We need to create one page and then it should allow us to manage and create multiple pages later. Uh, so just watch this one quick moment. Eventually we're going to have this link where I can go and I'm going to see all of these companies and brands. So the question earlier was, do I need to have a physical location for a Google Plus page? No. I can have Google Plus pages for businesses that have locations and for businesses that are just a brand that don't have a location. <coughs> I have access to this because I've made more than one. You don't have this yet. The way you set this up is, up on the address, go to business.google.com. This is how you access this the first time. And then after we do this, we'll be able to toggle back and forth with that button at the top right. But at the moment, go to that address, business.google.com. <coughs> business.google.com. So I'm going to say on my notes down here, access and create all your Google Plus business pages at http colon slash slash business dot google dot com. The first time you will need to go to that address directly and after that you should be able to switch back and forth with that icon on the top right. Question? They don't go. They don't follow through. They're separate. If you add contacts on your personal account, your personal profile, they don't automatically go to your business page, unfortunately. And to my knowledge, there's no easy way to get them out of one into the other. You'll have to add them again. All right. So everyone should be at business.google.com, and I think yours looks a little different. I think yours looks. Does it look like a map? No. What do you guys see? Let me see, what do you guys see on your business? Splash page. Okay, perfect. What you want to do is then click the button that says Get on Google Plus, right in the center. No, what's happening here is this one. This is your friends, me. All right, so there is that splash screen, and then you want to click on Get on Google. There was a blue button in the center, and now it shows a map, right? Yeah. right. <coughs> so you see a map, and um, this assumes you're about to add a Google Plus page with a location. Not a lot of you, or not every one of you, have a business where you're going to want to put it on the map and that's fine but if you do have a business that you want to put on the map we want to search our address now before we go before we do this again to teach this is one thing to do it for real in in the real world is another because what I mean here is let's say I have a physical location Victor's Bakery on Main Street so I would type in my address 123 fake street whatever and then I would confirm that that address that I'm trying to claim is my address, my business. And I'm going to get that confirmed one of two ways. 
I'm either going to get a phone call at my business phone number at this moment to confirm it. I'm not at the business. I can't confirm it. And it's going to be trouble for me to get in touch with who's on the front desk at the moment to relay the message to me and all of that. So you might have a real location that you want to create a Google Plus page. I sort of don't recommend to do it yet because you can't confirm it right now. The other way to confirm it is they will mail you a, uh, a little postcard. And on that postcard will be further instructions to confirm. And you think, this is a hassle. No, this, you need this, because what's to stop your competitor from claiming your Google Plus page and putting terrible things on it? What's to stop it is that this, they will, Google will call you to confirm it's you, or Google will send you a postcard in two weeks to confirm that it's you. That's also to stop you from doing that to your competitor. So I can't quite claim my business on Google Plus at the moment as a physical location. And so you can give it a try, but you might run into a roadblock. So here's what we'll do. On the top left, you see uh, three little lines. That's your menu. Click your three-line menu. I'm sure it has an official name, but click that menu at the top left. And you have either add a location on a map or add a brand that doesn't need a map. So maybe for our learning purposes, you might have a real location, but maybe for our learning purposes, we will create a brand, learn how it works, and then delete it. And then when I get to my business later today, I will go back here, business.google.com, and actually add the physical location. For when they call me, I can confirm it. And I can manage multiple ones of my company. I can have access to other people's if they give it to me. We'll see how. I can have multiple locations. Maybe I have branches. One of our clients has a location here in San Diego and Los Angeles. We have created a Google Plus page for their location in San Diego and Los Angeles. Because we might want to share specific things for the Los Angeles <coughs> marketplace and specific things for the San Diego marketplace just like every other big business does. The Spokane, Washington, no, the San Diego, California branch of, San, of McDonald's shares some things, and the San Diego, Texas branch of McDonald's shares something else. Yes, there's a San Diego in Texas. They ripped us off. So what we want to do here, oh, and before this, contact. There's the phone number. There's the place where you can go and call Google and say, I'm having trouble with this, you know, a little self-help here, and then a live person give me a call and as I said I called at midnight and the answer and we got it figured out that's found under that menu there when you go to business.google.com now that you're a business they want to make you happy regular person get in line will help you but a business we're here for you click on add a brand page Create your Google Plus page. That's what we want, a page for the business. If you have a business Gmail account, you still want to go through this because you still technically have a personal account, even though it's linked to your business Gmail. Page name, this can be anything you want. I have this fictional business, Victor's Bakery. Notice I can use uppercases and lowercases and apostrophes and symbols and all of that. This name that I'm typing here is not the name of my Google Plus address. Um, I mentioned it last week, but remember google.com slash plus. Did I mention it last week? Mashable? Google.com slash plus Mashable. At the moment, you are not going to get this name yet. Your name is going to be google.com slash blah, 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 blah. Everyone gets a gibberish name at the beginning, so that if you're a spammer, you know, no one's going to find that address. But if you're a real business, that's not good. I want a real short address. Eventually, I want google.com slash plush Victor's Bakery. I want that name. But I cannot claim that name right away. In order for them to prevent spammers from stealing these names of legitimate companies, Google Plus does not let you claim your short name your custom name until you've met some criteria. They change the criteria once in a while. We'll look it up in a moment, but I'm going to note here. You cannot 
claim your custom name, so your vanity address, right away, usually. If me that I have had an account for years and I work with multiple legitimate businesses, if it lets me do it right away, I can because I have that experience. But you, that this is the first time you're going to create a page, most likely it will not let you claim your custom name because it'll think, you know, unfortunately, guilty until proven innocent. It'll think you're a spammer, and then after you fulfill the criteria, then it'll let you claim the short name. Yes? What if you already have a website? Do you use that? Mm, it's one of the things that helps you, but it might not be the only thing that really legitimizes you. Uh, and it is annoying, but have to have a, a URL, uh, a, web, a web address for your business, have to have your profile filled in, your profile completed, have to use your, no, sorry, not profile, remember, page, profile is personal, page is business, have to have, have to use your page consistently. I don't know exactly consistently what they consistently. Uh, I don't know exactly what they mean consistently, but if you use it like once a week for a couple of weeks, that usually triggers it. Um, I believe um, this one is a bit more optional. Uh, if you have a physical location, because any spammer can create a page and they don't really have a real business location, so they're not going to be able to get their name. You, right now, are all going to have the gibberish name, unfortunately. But as we follow these guidelines, and I, I'll have to look up if there's any new ones, eventually, one day, when you're going to log in, at the very top, it'll say, you are eligible for a custom name. I think I saw it for a couple of people, actually, right now. Uh, eventually, you're going to log in, Eventually, it will say at the very top, you are eligible for a custom, I think it's custom link. And what you want to do is click on that and follow the steps. And then you will get a nice short name like our company, uh, google.com slash plus PMD Interactive. So what we are typing right now is not that name there. That's simply the name that is going to be displayed when someone searches on Google or in Google+. This name right here, this custom name, this short name, this vanity address, you won't get it right away. You have to use Google+, legitimately, like a real business, and then eventually the algorithm or a real person will see, okay, they're legitimate. You can claim your name now. That is to help prevent spam. So right here then, that's not your address. Website. This is if you've currently got a website that exists, you want to add its address there. Uh, let's say in my case I do. I do have victorsbakery.com. If you don't have an address, you don't have to fill it in right now. But I mentioned it last time. You still want to have a website, a .com or .net or .org or .biz or whatever. You still want a website because you will not be able to complete your ultimate conversion goal on any of these networks easily. And by that, I mean what is it you're trying to do online? I'm trying to sell cupcakes. I can mail order people cupcakes, but I cannot do that on Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, Facebook, Snapchat, any of those. I can guide people back to my website where they can go to the shopping cart and put their credit card in, but I cannot take credit cards through a tweet or a Google Plus post or an Instagram pic. I can't complete that goal. It's just a form of advertising. So just like I see a poster on the wall and it says sign up for this class. I cannot sign up literally on the poster. I still have to go to the front desk or the website or whatever. So that's why you still need a website or your Etsy shop or your eBay listing or whatever, your Craigslist, where you actually complete that goal.
If you don't have a site, you can add it later. Type of page. Are you a product or a brand? Are you about entertainment, community, or other? Not a lot to choose from, but probably product is or brand is the best one. I'm a bakery. I sell products, cookies, so I'll choose brand, uh, product. I may be a brand where, you know, I'm a web design company, and my brand is that we get hired and do websites for people. You know, I'm a band, entertainment. I'm a nonprofit organization for the community. There it is. If it doesn't quite fit, I can do other. None of these is wrong. It's just that it will help you to get found by the right people, the right customers. I'll select product. There's the terms and conditions, which no one reads, but everyone agrees to. You can read it at some point, and then you have to agree and click Create Page. Click Create Page. It might ask me for a phone number here to confirm. Again, this is not going to send you any marketing. I'm not going to send any marketers to you to buy anything. This is to confirm that you're real. So this uh, should be uh, your phone. It doesn't have to be your business phone. It could be the one you have right now, just to confirm that you're real. So I'm going to take a moment to confirm that. Oops, used too many times for verification. So you're going to fill yours in, and then you're going to um, you're going to put in your phone number, and then you're going to you're going to well, then we're going to use it. Sometimes it changes. Okay. All right, so then uh, because it, as I said, I've used this too many times, I, I can't show the exact same thing. But let me see what's on your screens over here. text message or a call that then says that then confirms you. Yes. Yeah, you type Victor's Bakery so it, it claimed Victor's Bakery. That's fine. You can have multiple people have the same name actually. No, you just created it. If you type Victor's Bakery, you just created a business called Victor's Bakery. All right, so um, hopefully you get to something that looks kind of like this. Uh, at the top it says Google My Business. Mine's already filled in and verified because, again, I can't, I, I, I guess I can't use that same phone number anymore. Question? Well, the Google My Business become, uh, yes, please keep me informed when you're in chat. Okay, there's going to be a little check mark about keep me informed. It's going to send you emails once in a while with tips and advice on how to use Google Plus the best. You can decide to get those emails or not. If you say yes, and then eventually you get tired of them, you can unsubscribe. But right now, if you don't want to get them, you just say no. I sort of recommend say yes, because it will send you some valuable emails in the beginning, and then you can get more informed. Yes? It says here, um, in order to enter a 10 year tag, what is that, basically a brief summary of? Yeah, um, I think mine's going to say that too in just a moment. Um, let me see. But basically, yes, uh, so we'll look at this in more detail in a moment, but it's asking for some sort of tagline, some sort of slogan about your business. So what we're going to do is, let's take our first break. At this point, I just want to make sure that we've got the... Uh, I want to make sure that we've got the, uh, the account set up.
if you get in got into any roadblocks, let's figure that out. I want to see if we can get to this screen that says Google My Business. Once we're all, all here after the break, then we'll go on. We'll see the nuances of this and how to use it most effectively. So we'll be back. It's 10.45. We'll come back at 10.55, and we'll go on. And if anyone needs any help, call me over, and I'll turn on the printer if you need to print it.